This is English shorthand dictation number 186 and the dictation speed is 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. There is a lesson from the ongoing failure of the monsoon session of parliament until there is a clear link between how one performs in parliament and the votes one gets in elections politicians will not change the way they approach their role as legislators the house has not run smoothly so far and given the impasse an immediate resolution does not appear to be on the horizon there is a possibility that the session will not see parliament perform its main role of deliberative law making holding the executive accountable and articulating citizen centric issues the immediate trigger for the impasse is the opposition's demand for a discussion and inquiry on Pegasus and the government's reluctance to do so. It would be productive to have a discussion on Pegasus and then pursue other legislative business. There could well be other mechanisms to resolve the impasse too. But the question is why the government and the opposition have not invested enough energy in resolving what is really not an intractable issue and that goes to the question of incentives. For a government that enjoys a majority and can get its legislative agenda through even amidst a din, the functioning of the House does not make a material difference to its objectives. Non-functioning allows it to evade hard questions. For the opposition, the ability to disrupt, make a noise, even snatch papers from ministers seems more politically advantageous. They think this allows them to come across as belligerent and aggressive. For members of parliament who would like the house to function, there is little room to generate pressure because their incentive lies in proving their loyalty to the party line. But at the core of it, members of parliament know that what they do in parliament will not affect their electoral prospects. Attendance, questions asked, Interventions in key debates hardly figure in the heat and dust of electoral battles. Therefore, till parliamentary performance becomes a parameter in how citizens judge their representatives, India's parliament will continue to see bursts of productivity interspersed with bouts of disruption. Honorable Speaker Sir, I strongly oppose the introduction of the bill as it is a draconian legislation to cut down the democratic and legitimate rights of the workmen in the country. Sir, the provision in the bill is to prohibit the strike. The Essential Defense Services Bill is violating the fundamental right guaranteed in Article 19 of the Constitution of India. The sole intention of of the bill is to curtail the democratic rights of the defense civilian workers. Sir, the legitimate right of workers to strike is guaranteed in the Industrial Disputes Act 1947 and also in the latest Industrial Relations Code. The infringement of the legal right of the employees is a violation of all these rights as well as the provisions of the ILO conventions. The ILO convention have already stated that the right to strike is the democratic right of the working class in the country. It is being unilaterally curtailed. The entire purpose of this legislation is to cut down the democratic right of the working class in India. Hence, I strongly oppose this bill and I also appeal to the Honorable Speaker that this is not the way by which a bill is introduced when the House is not in order. This is a very important bill. 
there are 41 ordnance factories in India. Now the government of India under the Ministry of Defense is trying to convert them into separate boards. It is an indirect way of privatization of ordnance factories in our country and the sole purpose of this bill is to ban strikes. Sir, 84,000 employees in the defense sector, particularly in the ordnance factories, ordnance factories will be affected by this. Banning the right to strike means taking away the legitimate right of the workers. There is the Industrial Disputes Act of 1947. Even the labor courts are there. Unilaterally taking away the right of the workers is an undemocratic step. I want to move the amendments, but passing a bill in the pandemonium is not proper. It is not fair as far as the parliamentary practice is concerned. The Essential Defense Services Bill 2021 seeks to replace the ordinance promulgated in June 2021. The bill allows the central government to prohibit strikes, lockouts and layoffs in units engaged in essential defense services. Essential defense services include any service in any establishment or undertaking dealing with production of goods or equipment required for defense related purposes or any establishment of the armed forces or connected with them or defense. In addition, the government may declare any service as an essential defense service if its cessation would affect the production of defense equipment or goods, operation or maintenance of industrial establishments or units engaged in such production or repair or maintenance of products connected with defense. The bill amends the Industrial Disputes Act 1947 to include essential defense services under public utility services. Under the Act, in case of public utility services, a six-week notice must be given before persons employed in such services go on strike in breach of contract or employers carrying on such services do lockouts. Under the bill, strike is defined as cessation of work by a body of persons acting together. It includes mass casual leave, coordinated refusal of any number of persons to continue to work or accept employment, refusal to work overtime where such work is necessary for maintenance of essential defense services and any other conduct which results in or is likely to result in disruption of work in essential defense services. Under the bill, the central government may prohibit strikes, lockouts and layoffs in units engaged in essential defense services. The government may issue such order, if necessary, in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of India, security of any state, public order, public decency or morality. The prohibition order will remain in force for six months and may be extended by another six months. Strikes and lockouts that are declared after the issue of the prohibition order or had commenced before the issue of prohibition order will be illegal. The prohibition will not apply to layoffs made due to power shortage or natural calamity or layoffs of temporary or casual workmen. Employers violating the prohibition order through illegal lockouts or layoffs will be punished with up to one year imprisonment or rupees 10,000 fine or both. Persons commencing or participating in illegal strikes will be punished with up to one year imprisonment or rupees 10,000 fine or both. Persons instigating, inciting or taking actions to continue illegal strikes or knowingly supplying money for such purposes will be punished with up to two years imprisonment or rupees 15,000 fine or both. 
Further, such an employee will be liable to disciplinary action, including dismissal as per the terms and conditions of his service. In such cases, the concerned authority is allowed to dismiss or remove the employee without any inquiry, if it is not reasonably practicable to hold such inquiry. All offences punishable under the bill will be cognizable and non-bailable.